I'm Jason Howland, and welcome to Speaking of Health, a place to help you learn how to live a longer and healthier life. You know, our memory is something many of us take for granted. But what if progressively, over time, your memories faded and eventually were gone? And along with them, losing other thinking skills and ultimately your independence. It's called Alzheimer's disease, and here to tell us more is Dr. Winnie Powell. Dr. Powell is a Mayo Clinic Health System neurologist. Dr. Powell, thanks for joining us today on Speaking of Health. Thank you, Jason, for having me here today. Well, uh, we, today we are talking about Alzheimer's disease, but before we get into that, why don't you tell us a little bit more about uh, dementia overall and what that is? Uh, I like to consider dementia as a kind of fruit. It actually is fruit in general. Alzheimer's disease is one type of fruit, maybe apple, oranges in that sense. Uh, but before we go into dementia, let's talk about normal aging, because a lot of people are concerned. Is that really normal aging, or do I have any problem? Do I need to see my doctor? In normal aging, people can notice that they might have some word-finding problem, like, oh, I cannot come up with this, the name or this word, but they're like at the tip of my tongue. But then give them time, though. They will come back. Mm -hmm. So that's a sign of it. And they might take longer to do things, to think about things, or they might get distracted a little easier. But if you give them time, less distraction, they can still complete a very complicated task. That is normal aging. Dementia is a description of a group of um, uh, symptoms that affect us such that we cannot perform what we normally can do. They will affect the cognitive functions, for example, memory, language, visual spatial perception, planning, reasoning, um, and such. So in order to be considered as having dementia, you need to have at least two of those um, functions that are so compromised or significantly compromised that is affecting how you run your daily life, affecting your work, maybe affecting your activity at home, then you can be considered as dementia. So Alzheimer's dementia is the most common kind of dementia. About 60 to 80 percent of all dementia is Alzheimer's type. But it can also be mixed. That is to say, not just Alzheimer's, but there is something else also going on. And so what exactly is Alzheimer's disease? Alzheimer's disease, um, what we know is that this type of disease, they have these landmark or these two typical abnormal protein we found in autopsy. One is plaque, which is from beta amyloid protein. The other is uh, tangle, which is from another protein called tau. And both of them can cause, uh, they are toxic to the uh, brain cells, and they can also cause neurodegeneration. Those, those two are the hallmark of what we can see. In so the plaque and the tangles are, are actually found in or on the brain? Yes. In autopsy, we can see them. And in fact, you use that to stage how severe the disease is from autopsy. So how common is Alzheimer's disease? Alzheimer's disease is quite common in all types of dementia. What we found, what we know is about when, you're, when people are 65 years old, about 1 to 2 percent of them will have dementia, or uh, prevalence uh, of dementia. When they reach 80, uh, it's about 10 to 15 percent, and it can get up to about 40 percent when they're at 90 years old. So we're talking millions of people. In fact, what they found also is that if you have dementia, it stays with you. So one out of three senior will die with the disease, Alzheimer's or some type of dementia. So uh, I would assume with uh, the baby boomers aging now, that number is expected to grow. Yes. Uh, in fact, if you um, look at Alzheimer's Association figures and data, they ex uh, estimated in 2013, within the United States, there will be about 5.2 million uh, people suffering from Alzheimer's disease. Five million of them are 65 years old or about. And in 2030, it is going to increase to about 7.1 million or so. And 2050, it is going to be 13.8 million. So you can see how fast it is going to grow. So what are some of the common signs or symptoms uh, of Alzheimer's disease? Alzheimer's disease now that we know is actually a stage of a continuum. You have what we call pre-Alzheimer's stage, which is the mild cognitive impairment, and even further on or earlier, you can have this preclinical stage that you already have the 
uh, proteins in your brain, okay, the processes are going on, but you just don't see any symptoms. Mm -hmm. Alzheimer's becomes more in the advanced situation. If you are in a mild cognitive impairment, it can also be from other reasons that cause that. So they can revert back to normal, but um, patient with um, uh, mild cognitive impairment, they do have a tendency to pro um, progress into having Alzheimer's type dementia, depending on what type of mild cognitive impairment that we're talking about too. So the mild uh, cognitive impairment that you're talking about, would that be uh, certain symptoms like uh, just common forgetfulness or maybe some mild confusion, that kind of thing? You know, normally common forgetfulness, if we're not paying much attention, that can happen. Mm -hmm. But now you keep going on like that and even friends and family are noticing that. A lot of times it's actually the person themselves notice it first. Mm -hmm. And they don't normally affect your daily activity unless it is something more complicated. Then they know, oh, I cannot use my computer as well. So these are like kind of a red flag. It doesn't have to be memory, though. It can be other things. It can be language. It can be, I cannot say the words that I would like to say. It can be vision, that actually people will go to see the ophthalmologist first before they come to see a neurologist. But the language and the visual part are more on the minority. The majority is memory. But it's not just memory. When you get Alzheimer's disease, they actually affect different kind of cognitive function as well. For example, uh, we mentioned a little earlier about planning, executive function. Planning, about um, reasoning, uh, we talk about language, we talk about visual spatial. Uh, so those are very important aspects. Also, they can affect behavior. The person can get depressed, agitated, frustrated. In fact, now we get to know more about dementia. We also notice that sleep disturbances is involved or associated with dementia. And people, older people, they start having some problem walking. And that is also could be the earliest sign of dementia. So more advanced uh, stages of Alzheimer's, um, what are some of the, the major symptoms of that? Um, in memory, for example, uh, they keep saying the same thing, keep asking the same thing, mm -hmm. cannot remember what's going on, this recently happened. Mm -hmm. um, they might get lost driving in places that they should know. Mm -hmm. uh, they can get easily flustered too. Um, they cannot come up with the right words or they make error. Now, these are the words they, they, they cannot come back. It's not like a normal aging. The speech can be shallow. Eh, they can go in roundabout way that doesn't quite make sense, doesn't quite answer your question. And in visual spatial, sometimes they have trouble typing. Okay, in executive function, they can have problem reasoning. They might have difficulty paying bills. Okay, a more complicated issue um, can be affected by that using the cell phone. Mm -hmm. um, so those are some of the things that you will see in the more severe. And when they proceed uh, to more advanced stage, then the daily activity—that's to say, grooming, to say, toileting. Uh, eating, dressing, and all that can be compromised. So I know we talked a little bit about it earlier with the proteins and the tangles, um, but <coughs> what causes this to happen? What causes Alzheimer's disease to happen? We, we don't really know. Uh, we believe that it is a combination of genetics, uh, family history, environmental, and lifestyle uh, risk factors. Uh, in fact, um, we do know that the risk factor associated with stroke or heart disease are highly associated with Alzheimer's disease too. For example, uh, midlife, high blood pressure, midlife obesity, diabetes, uh, sleep problem, obstructive sleep apnea, inactivity, lack of cognitive stimulation, kind of more reclusive uh, lifestyle, like no uh, limited social interaction, smoking, excessive drinking, even had trauma, depression, these are all risk factors that can lead to higher chance of developing dementia. And overall, um, the older you get, the more you're at risk, right? Yes, that's what we believe. And age is the, actually the most robust, the number one risk factor. And is there a certain age where it's most <coughs> prevalent or where you may begin to see signs? Uh, you know, we actually believe that the pathology the accumulation of the amyloid start decades before you see symptoms. In fact, it can happen in people in the middle age. And then it takes a long time for them to build up, build up, and then cause injury for you to see the clinical signs. So uh, let's talk about treatment and cure. Is there a cure for Alzheimer's disease? Do you foresee a cure for Alzheimer's <coughs> disease? And how do you treat patients with the disease? We all hope that there is cure for Alzheimer's disease. 
But right now, even though we know more and more about the disease uh, itself, uh, cure is still not quite there. In fact, the last FDA-approved drug was back in 2003, mm -hmm. and that's Mementine. Um, there has been a lot of clinical trials looking into how to remove a beta protein, how do we decrease the production of it, but so far they don't pan out. So besides uh, medication, are there other things that you can do to treat um, Alzheimer's disease? Uh, most certainly. You can do something about it at any stage. Uh, we earlier talked a little bit about uh, some of the risk factors, and they can be affected by or improved by lifestyle modification. So exercising more, uh, stimulate your mind, kind of cross-training your mind. Um, get yourself more involved in, in activities. Um, eat a healthy, life, a healthy diet. Um, moderate consumption of alcohol in certain situations. Okay? Those are all very helpful. And uh, blood pressure control. If you have sleep apnea, obstructive sleep apnea, get it controlled. Manage that. Sleep disturbances can affect a person's memory too in the long run as well. So you also want to look into that. So those are really a lot of things that you can work on to help yourself uh, to make you healthier, more immune towards uh, uh, these kind of a degenerative process. What about herbal remedies? Um, some uh, herbal remedies make um, exaggerated claims that they can prevent Alzheimer's or, or help treat it, um, various vitamins and, and things like that. Uh, what's your opinion on those? I like to think that if you have to pay a lot of money, uh, you probably need to think again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Unless for the pharmaceutical company, <laughs> they charge you a lot for the drugs. Um, what they found out, what we found out is that if you use single nutrient, all the vitamins B, C, E, okay, um, anti-inflammatory agent, uh, ginkgo biloba, they really, and antioxidant, they really don't work. But is it because we're just looking at one thing rather than looking at a diet? Um, so, you know, it's not only difficult for the patient, so much of the responsibility is put on the shoulders of caregivers of Alzheimer's patients. Um, do you have any words of advice for, for those folks? It is very difficult for them. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have a lot of respect for these people who sacrifice so much for their loved ones. Uh, what I would like them, well, at least the first thing is to understand the disease. Understand the progress of it, how it will evolve. So you don't have a necessary expectation. We know that the person is going to get more um, advanced, will get worse. Certain things that they can do in, or they could do in the past, they will not be able to do. So a healthy expectation is important. Don't push them so hard. Like try harder, try harder. It's not that they are not trying hard. They mm -hmm. really can do it. And then you can only cause agitation. So understanding, don't uh, overtax them, don't fatigue them, know what they really want. When they get more advanced, they cannot communicate with you as well. So sometimes you have to be like a Sherlock Holmes. You just see like, what do they really need? Is it this? Is it that? So you have to guess a little bit. And also, you need to take good care of yourself. Um, make sure that you have enough rest. You cannot be there for 24-7. You also want to, when they are able to communicate with you, when they're able to put in their um, um, preference about advanced directives, what do they want to do too? And ultimately, really, is to keep them safe, maintain their dignity, make them comfortable, make them happy, and be there for them. And utilize the community resources. Talk to your doctor. Talk to a social worker. Talk to the a support group. There are a lot of support group out there. Talk to uh, national association, for example, the Alzheimer's Association, and such. There are a lot of uh, really uh, resources that one can use and utilize them. So the uh, uh, caregivers uh, shouldn't feel like they should have to take that burden on totally by themselves. Utilize what's out there. Uh, most certainly, because. Um, if you get sick, who will suffer? Mm -hmm. It will be the patient and yourself too. You're not helping the situation, right? And um, there are, there is a lot of help out there. And also, it's very important to know that you're not alone in this. And there are people going through the same thing. People, we learn from each other. And people might have new tricks, things that they actually do that work very well. So those are kind of like money in your pocket. You just go and share your experience. Well, unfortunately, that's all the time we have, but a uh, uh, great topic and a great guest today, Dr. Winnie Powell, neurologist from Mayo Clinic Health System. Thank Thanks for much. joining us today. Thanks. Have a great day, everyone, and be healthy.